Hi. Uh, first of all, hello, and uh, thanks for having me here in uh, this wonderful uh, city and on this wonderful conference. Uh, so, I, what I wanted to speak about today is building architecture stays your way, right? So, um, first of all, who am I? I'm Maciej Małecki. Um, I talk to servers. Uh, I'm Maciej Małecki on Twitter. In most cases, I'm pretty lucky and the servers actually talk back, uh, which might be one of the reasons I'm here. Um, but let's, uh, let's go back to the talk title real quick, right? Um, building architecture is the easy way. There's obviously something wrong with this talk title. Um, and this is this. Uh, if anyone ever tells you that they found a deployment silver bullet, or that they know how to deploy stuff and uh, that will never fail or uh, something like that, they are obviously lying. I spent um, I spent so much time looking for a deployment silver bullet. Uh, I took part in writing platform as a service stuff, deployers, uh, service registries, and in the end, I found that the only deployment silver silver bullet I can find is not looking for one. Um, what you should do, uh, what, what I think you should do instead, is just learn uh, your requirements as an organization or as a you know for a personal project. Uh, learn your constraints, so learn what kind of stuff you want to handle, learn what you don't want to handle, uh, so select your scope uh, very carefully, and reuse instead of building, um, but there is more about, uh, about reuse coming. Um, so how many of you here in this room are satisfied with your deployment process, whether it's a company uh, project or a personal project, hands up if you are satisfied with your deployment process. <laughs> okay, so Dominic does uh, NPM publish, uh, which is why he's satisfied. Uh, but other than that, I think we had uh, like three or four hands up, which is pretty low for a conference of, um, I think, one more than 100 people. Uh, so I think that maybe even if we can't find a silver bullet for that, I, I think we can still uh, do reasonably well, and I think that we can really do better than, uh, than those four, uh, hands up, and Dominic. Um, so key concepts I wanted to talk about today are uh, microservices, immutable infrastructure, service registries, uh, monitoring, and reuse. Um, so first of all, uh, microservices, I think that Arya did a great job covering uh, on this topic during her talk uh, earlier on, but just to give, you, give some context to people uh, who just woke up, microservices are a pattern for building software which is based on building uh, out of small, reasonable uh, applications that heavily communicate with each other, uh, and uh, they usually just fulfill a certain uh, business need. So a concern per service. Um, so why I think that microservices are really important in uh, building architectures is that uh, microservices are micro, right? And it's not even about the size of code, it's about the functionality. And the less functionality you have, the easier it is to test and the easier it is to reason about, right? Because when, you ha when we have this huge uh, Rails, on, uh, Rails monolith, uh, there isn't really a way to uh, to reason about, about that and to test it uh, really uh, thoroughly. Uh, so I think that microservices are one of the things which are really important in building uh, in building easier architectures. Um, okay, so immutable infrastructure. Uh, so I think that everyone who's done their first share of deployments uh, knows the situation I'm going to portray. Uh, you you have a server you. Uh, run updates on it, you deploy, to, you deploy your code, which was probably tested, which maybe even went to staging beforehand. Uh, and I mean, it works on your machine, right? Um, and then you deploy it to production, and then suddenly everything is on fire, right? People are running around, uh, waving their hands in uh, really scarily motions, uh, and yelling at you and stuff like that. Uh, so. Immutable infrastructure is, uh, might be there for you to, to save you from that. So uh, what immutable infrastructure is, uh, the premise is never upgrade your servers. Once a server is deployed, you just 
leave it alone, just don't touch it. Uh, just let it live. And if you, need, uh, if you need new software deployed, you just spin up a new machine, you test it, uh, you uh, run your integration tests, you add it to, uh, you add it to your rotation, whatever. Uh, but basically, new, so new. Hi. Oh, yeah. Um, so new version of application means new server. New open SSL bug means new server, right? With the open SSL bugs, you're going to be going through lots of servers, um, but there are ways to make that easier. Um, so basically, the premise is create new server, test it, uh, add it to uh, add it to your rotation, and just roll with that. So uh, some time ago, this would sound crazy, right? Because we, we would have this whole uh, big data centers with a bunch of uh, bare metal boxes, and reinstalling the operating system on each of those each time you deploy just sounds crazy. But these days, we actually have tools to make that easier for you. Uh, so these days, we actually have um, Docker, we have SmartOS, we have uh, Ansible, we have Nix. Nix is a very interesting package manager, by the way. If you're interested in, in that kind of stuff, it's a functional package manager which uh, has really strong guarantees as to uh, as to its output. And uh, I, I I would uh, like to invite you to check it out uh, if you're interested in that. Uh, so the next, uh, I think, key part of the solution are service registries. So service registries are actually just a service that sits somewhere and waits for other services to talk to it. So um, how this usually works is a service comes up, it starts listening on a port, and it talks to the service registry. Uh, and it's like, hey, I'm here, I'm listening on this host and on this port, and please come talk to me, or don't. Um, and those service registries uh, store all the data which is, uh, which is involved with finding other hosts on the network to talk to. Uh, so with micro uh, microservice-based architecture, you're going to have uh, lots of those services, and they are going to be communicating with each other. Which is why finding, which is why the uh, having the ease of just hitting up a service and asking where all the other services are is pretty important because you get rid of this notion of having those sacred IPs and of having you know the guy uh, just sitting there and editing uh, IPs in your config file. Which also removes the human factor, right? Which is very important uh, if you want to do deployment right, deployments right. Um, not that humans make mistakes or anything like that. Um, so there are, uh, there are a couple of, of service registries out there already. One of those is etcd, which is uh, pretty popular with uh, Docker Crowd, I think, these days. Um, there is console. Uh, there is uh, a bunch of stuff. Uh, for that already, so don't write it uh, yourself. I made that mistake, uh, and I just wasted a bunch of time just reuse uh, the existing stuff. Um, so next thing is monitoring. Uh, so how many of you are satisfied with your monitoring at uh, at your company, personal project, whatever? Hands up. Yeah, this is like four people again. Okay, uh, we can certainly do better than that. And uh, what I wanted you to see is this. Here's what you know about your infrastructure if you don't monitor it closely. So now this thing took up the whole slide. Um, and that, that's about it, uh, pretty much. Without monitoring, you, you know nothing about your infrastructure. You know nothing about how, uh, how your stuff works. You don't have the knowledge required to even begin thinking about scaling stuff or, uh, or improving the infrastructure, improving, uh, improving the stuff. And without monitoring, you usually don't really have the chance to see that something's going uh, wrong, right? So you'll just, instead of getting called by, uh, by your monitoring service, you'll get called by your angry users, um, which I think sucks. Um, because nobody likes to get out of their beds to satisfy some users. Um, anyway, examples of monitoring services. Uh, Nagios, which we all love to hate, but it's good. It, it's out there, it exists. It's, 
it has more than 10 years of, uh, of being used in production by various companies, I think. Uh, next one is uh, Godot slash Forza. It's, it's a thing which we uh, wrote uh, at Nojitsu back in the day, which is actually really neat because it's just new line delimited JSON. So you can process that really easily and you can embed that with, uh, with everything. Uh, next one is Riemann, which is also, um, which was the basis for Godot, except Riemann is Clojure and Godot is Node.js. Um, the next one is Zabbix, uh, which is also one of those uh, production tested monitoring solutions out there. Uh, those are just examples, right? You can, you can totally find tons of other stuff out there uh, for, for doing just that. Um, so this is, uh, I have to admit, this slide was a bit of an afterthought because uh, I only added it this morning. Uh, so, um, but I also decided that if I run over time and they try, uh, they try interrupting my talk, I'm going to hold on to the stage and show you this slide as my, as my last slide here. Um, because I think that um, lots of companies make the mistake of um, of trying to develop their own thing, which is fine, which uh, if that gets your uh, developers happy, then, uh, then it's fine. But you probably don't have the time or money to write a deployment stack. And if you, if you do, if you don't have the right people, you'll probably fail miserably. Um, so this is, uh, this is really important. Uh, I, I've made the mistake of trying to write my own deployment stuff. Um, it, Took a bunch of time. Uh, it was pretty satisfying in the end, but um, it was it was pretty much a waste of time now that I uh, that I look at it um, in ret in retrospective. Uh, so um, yeah, to sum it up, um, never upgrade your servers. Have your services register with a service registry to avoid uh, having the human. Uh, the human there editing IPs in your uh, in your config files. Monitor uh, those services closely, and never build stuff that you shouldn't be building. There is someone out there who's already built that part, probably put it up in GitHub, uh, probably deployed it for you, and probably tested it for you too if you're especially lucky. Um, so don't build the stuff that you uh, that you shouldn't be building here. Um, Yeah, uh, that's about it uh, for me. Uh, thanks for having me here again, and uh, thank you. <laughs>